great message amen and I know we can all relate to that I'm so glad he didn't discard us because of he was willing to die on a cross and forgive us amen and you should praise his name and praise his name often if you got your Bible this morning we want to be in the New Testament for a few moments in the book of James uh, chapter 1 of course you find James uh, in the very back there a few uh, books uh, prior to Revelation James chapter 1 uh, this morning uh, a text, I believe, that uh, brings out a, an interesting topic today. It's a little one-word uh, uh, topic, and it's our thinking, or thinking, if you will. And you wonder sometimes how, and you probably do as I do, what, what is it that uh, draws us away? What is the illustration of, of life, I, I say, we look for this morning in this particular text? A text that reminds us that we need to abide in Jesus Christ. A text today that tells us our thinking, uh, uh, and you may not know this, but it, in my case it does, thinking gets us in trouble sometimes, amen? Uh, sometimes, folks, we get to thinking on our own instead of uh, letting the Holy Spirit do the talking. We do a little bit too much talking. James 1 tells us today that we are enticed. It is not by the tempting of God. It is not Jesus Christ who said, let me see if I can put some worrisome on my people or tempt them or, or test, test them. I, I want to, uh, he, he wants us to, to, to know that we have a Holy Spirit 
that dwells within us, that helps us that when we are enticed by this old world, folks, that we can be overcomers of that. We can, with our thinking, relate back to what God would do. Ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? Is that the word? Yeah, what would Christ do in any particular situation? And I believe if we would ask that more, I believe our hearts would be uh, better prepared. In this text today, we'll see those words of, a, of an enticing world, a world that wants to see you, let, let me say, a world that wants to see you Christians fail. That's what the world's all about. It makes the world feel much better when they see a Christian fail. You understand that? But listen, I believe we have an opportunity too to stand tall in the name of Jesus. I believe we have the opportunity day in and day out with our thinking to let the Holy Spirit be the one that moves within our lives and shows a different side. I believe it's very pleasing to God. Stand with me if you found that, James chapter 1. Let's look at this scripture here just for a, a few moments today. Verse 13, I want to pick up in verse 13. Uh, James chapter 1 and verse 13. It says, Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and, here's that word, enticed. Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Of his own will beget he us uh, with the word of the truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his create, creatures. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Heavenly Father, your words today are encouraging words. Your words are positive today for us, for we ought to think today, Heavenly Father, how to, we can leave here with a better attitude on life, a better attitude uh, and gratitude, uh, 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 a positive note in our minds. We want to leave here, Heavenly Father, uplifted. So I ask you today, Heavenly Father, to change our thinking, not from our, from our heads, but down to our hearts. For it's in your name we pray, amen. And you may be seated. You know, I think of a, uh, and thinking of this message uh, this past week. Some uh, anybody here that remember? Uh, maybe it's still out there. There was a there was a little there was a little book. Uh, I think we read in elementary school somewhere uh, down through there that uh, of the little engine that that could. Y'all remember the little the little was a little train engine that looked at the hill and and what did he say? I, I think I can. I think I can. A positive. Uh, uplifting. I, I thought about that little book this week and, and thinking that I, I remember reading that uh, as, as, a, as a child, as a youngster, and how much information from that little book is still effective today. We, we sometimes get that old negative side of thinking because we don't uh, insert the positive side. We concentrate a little too much on the darkness. We concentrate on what the world says. We concentrate too much on what our neighbor says. We, we, we hear too much about what the co-worker said instead of what Jesus Christ says. You see, I think there's a positive side of Christianity. I believe the positive side is the one that does exactly what that little train said. I think I can. I think I can. And it's very important that we move that way. In the, in the movie that was out uh, years ago, I, I still get tickled at it. Uh, what about Bob? Y'all remember what about Bob? Uh, Bob was a mess. But anyway, there was a book that What About Bob was uh, featured about, a doctor that was helping a, a psychotic fella. Uh, but anyway, his book was Baby Steps. The book was where he took little steps. Did you know in life, 
that if we would continue to take the little steps in a positive manner, one step at a time, one day at a time. Listen, sometimes in life, we need one ounce of that each day, just a little bit each day, a positive side. It changes our thinking. Listen, this whole world can be, it can be hard on you. This whole world can be tough to live in. If you listen to people long enough, folks, let me tell you something. You'll just quit. You'll just say, let me, I, that's it. I've had just about enough. I, I listen, so little politics, because there's a negative side of politics that just drives me crazy. I'd still like to hear the positive side of something good happening. And, and I think we find that more in this word than anywhere else. Folks, there's a rescuer out there. His name is Jesus. There's one that's going to help you to, in your thinking, overcome the old negative world. There's some thinking that's going to help you in, in the verse 14, 13. It says, let no man, uh, uh, first of all, say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. Folks, I've said this before. God is not, God is not in heaven thinking how he can make your life miserable today. God is in heaven today wanting you to praise his glorious holy name. Amen. Folks, I think of Jesus Christ, and I say this today. I say the word Jesus, and I get excited about Jesus, folks, because he is, he's my hero. How about yours? Amen. Listen, when I need a rescuing, I can call on God, and he's coming, and he's going to comfort me. That spirit's going to be, uh, to start to speak out. You know, the greatest action I believe this fully. I do, church. The greatest action that takes place in our lives is between our head and our heart. That, that's something to see happening. If you are filled with Christ this morning, if you are a Christian today, let, let me share something with you. There is, a, there is a war going on, being battled right now. And listen, you're sitting here in the comfort of this air condition, these chairs. Because old Satan would like to come in here and sit with you. Don't you let him in here. Old Satan is begging for you to slip over just a little bit and let me sit down. Won't you let him sit down? It's between your head and your heart will make the difference of whether or not you let him sit with you or not. Folks, I'm telling you, he's not going to stand up here with me. He's just absolutely not going to stand up here because I'm not going to give him not one ounce of respect. I am not going to entertain him in any way. Folks, I am going to talk about Jesus Christ, the one that loved me enough in spite of me to save my own sorry soul. I was headed to hell and he changed my direction. Why would I give Satan any glory? He doesn't deserve it. So there's a lot going on right now, Christian, in your, between your mind and your heart. God is in between there. Oh, Satan is pushed away. The Holy Spirit is dwelling, and it is teaching. It is preaching. It is talking to you as we speak, if you allow it. It's in your control. It's under your control today. I, I read a story one time. I didn't read the whole book. I read, a, uh, as I do a lot of times, uh, inserts of books. I find an interesting topic in there, and I, I, I read it. But it was about a football coach from Colorado. Didn't know much about him. Christian football coach. Uh, was uh, highly involved in uh, uh, the promise keepers of men's. Uh, Y'all have heard of that? And, and anyway, he was a Colorado football coach. There was a problem with Colorado's football team. This was 15 years ago, or longer, long, quite a while back. There was a problem with them. They were defeated at most games before they took the field. They couldn't beat Washington. They couldn't beat Ohio State. Colorado or Buffaloes, I believe they were. Y'all seen them run out on that field with a buffalo on a, on a line, lunge line? But they couldn't beat UCLA. Now, they could beat Charleston Southern like Florida did yesterday and Georgia Southern and some of them other little old schools. But they, could, they, they lost in advance. They showed up for practice. True story. The football team showed up for practice. And the football field was no longer lined by yards. Football fields are measured by yards. 100 yards long, right? 
Theirs was measured by the length of a football field. Foot, football. The lines had been, the football had been placed between, and a line was put. And they went to practice and said, what's all these lines? He said, most games are lost by the length of a football. Folks, if you hold a football up between your head and your heart, it's about the length of a football. Did you know we lose in life often about the length of a football? They practiced day in and day out. They had plays that were set up, and they, all of them had those, a list of those plays. And they run those plays, and they said it was the funniest thing you ever seen. It looked like gophers trying to go in a hole. But the, 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 the idea was, I want to run this play and gain one football length. And if you'll watch, it's football season, isn't it, guys? It's all kicked off. We talked about it this morning. There's a lot of football games that will be lost uh, by the length of that football. That first down that they needed so bad, they came up short about a football. That coach put Colorado in a position. They played, practiced, practiced, and practiced, play after play after play to gain one football length. They did play UCLA. They did play UCLA. Both of them ranked in the top five or six or seven. Winner would go to the Orange Bowl. Colorado played for the national championship. They didn't call it the BCS back then. They just called it, uh, you won up, you know what I'm saying. You know how they did it? They were ahead by two points. And they were on the 35-yard line. And it was fourth and a foot. They said, we make it, we retain the football for four more downs. Time will run out, we'll win the game. They came to the sidelines, and he said, do you remember what I said? And the team, offensive team, laughed. They said, coach, we remember everything you said. There's not a chance that we can't move this football the length of a football. And they did. They retained the football for four more downs, won the football games, and got the invite to the national championship game and did beat a team there to win the national championship. Colorado did. I think they're only one in I don't know how many years. What did they remember? They remember what God said. He said that we need to be positive. We need to think those things that's in our mind, we're not tempted by God. Verse 14 said, but when man is tempted, when he is drawn away from his own lust, and he is enticed. We need to stop sometime and remember, how can we move forward? How can we have that positive thinking? How can we have a, a, a positive effort here? I'll tell you, it will come not from your head, but it will come from your heart. If we do it God's way, folks, I'm telling you, it will make all the difference in the world. The greatest action, I believe, that takes place is between the head and the heart. Because in between there, my friends, is God Almighty, is Jesus Christ. It says when, verse 15 says, Then when lust hath conceived, it bringeth forth sin. And sin, when it is finished, it bringeth forth a death. Do not err, my beloved brethren. What's he saying to us, church? He's saying here today that we need to think positive about our movement in, as Christians. We need to move forward. And yes, sometimes that may not be by leaps and bounds. As a church, let's take a look at our church here today. Let's continue to move forward the length of a football at a time. As long as we are moving forward, folks, we cannot be moving backwards. Amen? Are you seeing what I'm saying? We've got to continue to move, and we've got to have that thought that goes to our heart. What is going to be the best? What is going to exalt the name of Jesus? Folks, it'll be the very action that comes from the thoughts we have that moves to our hearts and the movement within. You see, I believe this today. That if we as Christians today would take this very important statement here and, and move forward, understanding that this whole world wants to entice you, but that enticement will not come from God. God is not going to send you out in, into a, a, a negative situation. God is going to give you a, a, an answer. God is going to help you in your thinking to do what is right with him. Every good gift, verse 17 says, and every perfect gift. You ever thought about that? Think about this in your life real quick here. Every good gift 
and every perfect gift is from above. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. If we would just stop long enough sometimes to get us a little piece of paper and list all the goodness of God, folks, you're going to, you're going to need a, a bigger piece of paper. I don't know what size paper you start with to list the goodness of God in your life on, but you're going to, I don't care what size it is, you're going to need a bigger one. Because he's mighty good to us, isn't he? Boy, he sends blessing upon blessing. We were here, uh, in here just a few minutes ago, and, and, and we we're talking. You know, well, it looks like it might, it might uh, uh, it's clouding up a little bit outside. It might rain. But did you know there's one that's in charge of the rain that knows whether or not we can stand it or not? Folks, the one that's still making the sun come up in the east and set in the west, he's still in control. The one who's, who, who's making it possible for to rain or not rain, the sun to shine, what a, it is still God Almighty. And I'll tell you, I love the very fact when I start thinking that God knows me personally. Not only is he looking out for the goodness of this world and the things here in it and making it still work for, folks, he is still looking out for you and I. He's still watching and giving to us graciously and mercifully. And we don't deserve it many times. We don't deserve it. So our thinking is so important. Hey, have you ever heard anyone say, now, now and you've, hear, you've heard these words before, uh, uh, probably, now, now, who do you think you are? Wait, 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 who do you think you are? Uh, we've also heard the words, uh, uh, what in the world were you thinking? I, I've heard that uh, uh, before. I used to have a, a high school football coach. And if you ever got one of those penalties for being stupid, he'd say, gee, Manetti, what were you thinking? I thought that was a pretty nice way to put it, didn't you? Gee, Manetti, what were you thinking? But, but I, I can remember, what, what are we thinking? You've, listen, y'all, y'all looking at me like I'm the only one that's ever heard that. Every one of you said it to you youngins before. Them kids of yours, what was y'all thinking, you know? And, but anyway, we, we think, what are we thinking? What is, what is our mentality? Are we on a positive? Are, are, we, are, are we on a, uh, a traveling in life with, a, uh, with negativeness? Uh, what are we thinking? You know, and, and books, have you ever noticed books? I, I even checked this out. Uh, this, uh, this morning, just for a few moments, it made me think I had made a note about uh, books on, on thinking. They're everywhere. They're, everybody's wrote a book on how to think. I looked in this off, my office over here right, right next door, and I looked, and there was, there was books on, on positive thinking, on thinking. But did you know what? I, I got uh, in my office at home where, where I study, I, I got books on, on positive thinking uh, and thinking the right. But did you know that if we don't have any action with those words they are just books with words in them so our thinking has got to be here look what it says i started on this verse every good gift just think about this put this in your thinking uh uh, uh, uh mind here every good gift no he didn't say some he says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and it cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Did you know there's one that we can count on, folks, and it's Jesus Christ? There's one that we can, you can take him to the bank, folks. He's not going to turn his back on you. There will be no shadow of God turning his back on you. God will walk through the fire with you. God will be there through the thick and the thin. God will be there to help you for the asking. Have you ever noticed how, how easy it is to call on God for the assistance that you need? Listen, we need peace today. We need peace in our lives today. There's a world that is willing to attack you today. There's a world out there that wants you to see the dark side of everything. Have you been around those kind of people? Let me tell you what to do with those kind of people. Tell them about Jesus Christ. Because they need Jesus. They need Jesus. I, I, I just love to hear someone that gives God the credit when God uh, is so deserving. I love a prayer of someone that says, thank you for the peace. I talked to a, a, a lady yesterday. I'm going to uh, do her husband's service uh, uh, Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. Uh, and I think I'd mentioned to you all. And, and, and she said to me yesterday, she said, I, I, just, I just have a... 
a, a peace right now. And I know the only way after losing my husband of 40-something years that I can have this peace is because Jesus has given it to me. Folks, I love to see someone or hear someone uplift the name of Jesus for what he's doing in our lives. Amen? We have so much to be thankful for. So our thinking should be in that uh, uh, fashion. So, you know, I, I was thinking, uh, uh, you know, of how we do get away and, and what happens in our minds, in our thinking here. But there's, there's something that happens, and I, I kind of mentioned it to you here just a minute ago. But, but the desires, this verse uh, we was talking about in verse uh, 14, being enticed. The desires of this whole world that take us away in our thinking from, from God, those desires, they, they come from no, no, no one else but Satan himself. Folks, Satan wants to see you fail. But let me say this. Satan is the one that puts on the bait. Satan is the one that puts on the bait. It's up to you and I whether or not we take that bait or not. There's the thinking between the head and the heart. And I, I thought about it. You see, we, we start thinking how uh, uh, in, in our lives uh, we, uh, about that bait, and we start thinking how good it could be. And, and then our thoughts uh, uh, begin to, to, to go uh, uh, without proper attention. And what I say there is, and what I mean there, is that we overlook the spirit that's inside of us as Christians. Our heads has got this in mind. Satan has put that old bait out there. We have decided to entertain it. And we've done that without proper thoughts, you see. But let me tell you something. That direction that we need, folks, it comes from the very action that we take when Jesus Christ speaks to us. The Holy Spirit speaks to you, Christian. Let me say this. If it doesn't, I need to see you down here for salvation. You need to get your life right. That Holy Spirit will intervene. It will over, overshadow the thoughts. It will help you put old Satan behind you. Yeah, you ever had a, and I think about it sometime with the Old, Old Testament, especially we talk about uh, prophets and, and, uh, and, the, and the words that came from God through those prophets, and then they prophesied the word, and then we saw those words come true as time when that's what would distinguish them as a prophet, someone who would say things that God had laid on their hearts, and then it would come true. We know those true words for it's from God, and, and that was truly a prophet. And, and that was how uh, a word came from God, and, the, and men were, were enticed by God and, and heard from God. And, and then we see here today the New, New Testament, as we know it here, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit, and it dwells with us all the time. Oh, the, 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 we, we realize that there's no separation. We don't need a, a priest to speak for us. We don't need, you don't have to come to me to pray, folks. I will pray with you at any time. But you don't have to. You can go directly to Jesus Christ. So we have a direct opening, if you will, to the Holy Spirit and let it begin to speak to us. But I think about some time uh, about in a, in, a, in a dream world. Uh, you, you may have had something that, uh, or someone on your mind. Have you done this? Uh, you, you've thought about somebody, something came up, an incident, or, or you, and, then you, and then you dreamed about it, and there they were in a dream. Hey, you don't even know what happened. I, I'll tell you how, what I'm talking about, too. Last week, Sandy told me she dreamed about a bull. Twice. Twice she dreamed about a bull. I said, what was the bull doing? She said, one time it was trying to catch me. Well, we don't, I got cows, but we don't have any bulls that's going to catch you. I said, what was you dreaming about bulls catching you? And then another night, she said, I dreamed about a bull again. And then I was in a gate, and you was trying to get it, and, 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 and I, it woke me up. I said, well, that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> well, here's what happens. Two or three days later, I decided to move some cows. And I'm standing over there with a little walking stick, shooing the cows, and there was a little baby calf that had just been born. And it got mixed up and didn't go out the gate with its mother. It went with some other cows. I told Sandy, just ease around it and bring it back through. Right? And I'd hold the gate. She went to push him, and he started going, and then it decided, I'm not going this way. She grabbed the little bull. <laughs> I wish y'all could see Sandy holding a baby calf. 
but that was her dream. It was going to happen. Sometimes we get things in our minds. We get things that, that, that possibly a dream, possibly, I, I, I don't know. But you know, there, this, this mind, our minds are powerful. But folks, there's something bigger than what's in our minds. There's something bigger, and it lies within our heart. And it's Jesus. We're going to be enticed in this whole world. We're going to dream dreams. We're going to think of things. We're going to wake up with nightmares. We're going to have all kinds of things happen in our life. There's going to be darkness that's coming into our lives in ways that we never expected. And I'm going to tell you something. We're going to have to deal with it. It's a challenge. But there's one that I can tell you of this morning, folks, that is up to the challenge for his children. And that is Jesus Christ. You're going to think the worst, but God's going to give you what it takes to find peace, to understand that he's in charge, and that we must turn it all over to him. Revival's around the corner. Our thinking is going to be a necessity. Our actions is going to be a necessity. Church, I believe we're in a great, great time right now to be in revival. I believe it's a time that, that harmony, unity come within the church. I believe it's a time when we recognize that we all serve Christians. Listen to me closely because this is a, something that is, is just, the, it's just destroyed in our, uh, in, in our theologies across this nation today. Everybody doesn't believe what we believe. We've got so many theologies out there. It has been washed, watered, separated, torn apart, rewritten. We've got more Bibles explaining it wrong than I have ever seen. We've got more word coming out of pulpits and seminaries today that is not that is not conclusive about the Word of God. I don't think this Word was written years and years ago and came from God, and it has any variableness. That's what the Word says here in James. There is no variableness in here. It is no wrong in this Word. And I believe we need to stand on it today just like it was fresh and anew as it was given to those that wrote it years and years and years ago. And I think our thinking has been just, uh, just, just, just watered down and people don't even know what to believe. I believe this revival is a good time for us to make sure we're on the same page. I think this revival is a good time for us to examine our own lives. I think this revival is a good time for us to look at our own thinking and ask ourselves, are we thinking what God would have us to be thinking in this 18th verse here it says of of his own will begat he us with the word of truth that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures creatures i'm sorry creatures wherefore my beloved brethren let every man be swift to hear slow to speak and slow to wrath for the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive, this is very important, church, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. I'd stop sometimes, and I, I think of wading out in a, in a river, of dark water as a teenage boy and a preacher putting his hands on my shoulders and turning me to face the bank of the Santa Fe River and there was men and women of my church that come to see me baptized and it's a vision that I hope I never lose it's a, it's a memory that I hope I will always be able to hold on to little church out in Brooker where I was raised they we just built a new sanctuary and it was February and the water was down to you know what degrees in the in the winter time in the river but we didn't have to worry about it new church with a baptistry warm water they said 
But everybody I'd ever seen baptized was baptized in the cold water of the Santa Fe River. That's where we baptized. And it brought a group of boys and girls together, four or five of us one morning, that had given their life in a few weeks prior. And he said, we're going to open services in three weeks in the new church. And they're going to baptize you in the baptistry. And we said, no. Can we go to the river like it's always been done? And they weighed us out in that cold water. It was about when it got up to here when I thought, boy, that would have been nice in that baptistry. <laughs> but it's a thinking, it's the thoughts in my mind that I have never relinquished. I can still re remember wading out in that water. Folks, your salvation, your soul has been changed with Jesus Christ. You're not, you now don't have just a, 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 a no longer just have a, a mindset, you've got a heart felt. It has moved the length of that football. You're now thinking with your heart. It's different. In the 23rd book of Proverbs, it's in the seventh verse. It says, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's us. What do you think with today? It enters your mind. We see our eyes is here, our, our heads here. We see. What do, we, what do you do to entertain it? Do you take it right onto your heart and let God discern it? Folks, that's the proper channels. That's the proper channels. We see, we hear, we know. Listen, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, let me tell you something about the power of the Holy Spirit. Folks, it will guide you. The power of the Holy Spirit will help you to make a wise decision. The reason we don't sometimes is we override it. We have that power. We have that power. I didn't say it was a power that God's happy with us with when we do that. Let the Holy Spirit speak. Don't think here. See here. Entertain here. What's in your heart is the truth.